first take us through the deal. Right, so it's about $21 billion, like you said, Dana is paying $21 billion in cash and then assuming about $400 million of pension liabilities. Now that that's how we get is, to 21.4. Yes, exactly, and that is important because GE has a significant underfunded pension liabilities, one of the biggest on the S&P 500, and some of its past transactions, they've not passed on the pension liabilities. So to see them doing that, I think, is a positive step. Obviously, this is a lot of cash coming in the door for a company that's rather cash-strapped, so I think that's the other really meaningful piece of this that it takes some of the heat off General Electric, especially as far as its balance sheet is concerned. So how much, have you had a chance even to do some rough numbers, how much the heat does it take off? Because we had Larry Culp just recently saying we've got to get the leverage down. He set specific targets about how far he's going to take it down. How much of this does, uh, does that accomplish for him? I still need to run some of the numbers, but this is a pretty meaningful step forward, and I think this will go a long way, and I think that's why you're seeing the shares up so significantly in pre-market, is this is a really sizable step. Now, what's not clear is what they're going to do with the rest of the healthcare business. Now, they'd previously said they were going to IPO that. This is the best part of that healthcare business. It's the fastest growing. It's sort of the sexiest, the, you know, sort of the most appealing to investors. So when you take that out and you sell it to Danaher, I'm not really sure what that means for the rest of the business. Now, if it was me, I would keep those healthcare assets in the company and use the cash flow because you really need the cash flow to offset the cash burn that you're seeing in the power unit, in GE Capital. They still have all of these funding needs going forward. So while this does alleviate some of the stress on the balance sheet, you do sort of have to work out that cash flow math going forward. So, yeah, so what they're left with isn't bad, it's just not growing. Right, I mean, it is growing, it's just not growing at the right. rate of the life sciences assets, but it does throw off a lot of cash, which you can't really say about the power business or about the aviation business even going forward as you think about some of these investment cycles that they probably have coming up. Makes perfect out. sense. At the same time, Larry Culp is an operator, and you're always in danger when you have something that's not a strategic asset that you're throwing off cash with about how you manage it, how much bandwidth that takes. Mm -hmm because you want to spend your time and effort on the things you think are going to grow. I think he does, but I don't think he has the luxury of doing that, mm. unfortunately. I think given the balance sheet concerns, given the challenges in the power unit and GE Capital, he really sort of has to run the company for the balance sheet and for cash right now, which is why I think you're seeing him sell off this life sciences asset. Now, there was speculation before about Danaher making a bid for this business when John Flannery was CEO. GE said no at the time, and now to see Larry Culp taking this step, you know, this is a move for bondholders. That's really what he, who he's answering for to with this move. Move. Yeah, and it, it sounds at least like a big first step in the direction he said he was going to go, and it's decisive, it's a, it's a big uh, ticket item. Understandable what it is for GE, it really takes care of some of the leverage problems, uh, as you said, hopes of bond owners. Danaher says there, it's going to be a creed of 45 to 50 cent, uh, cents per share. That's a lot. I mean, it, I mean, if that's right, this is a really good deal for Danaher. It is. I mean, Danaher is really known as being a great capital allocator. They do deals, they bring these businesses in, and then they find a way to run them better. And so I think, you know, GE Healthcare is one of the better pieces of GE, but I think what we've learned through this crisis is that this company was maybe not managed as well as it could have been, especially on the cost front and in terms of just sort of being part of a conglomerate. And Danaher just really knows how to run businesses. And so I think that may be playing into some of these accretion numbers. Life Sciences is a business that Danaher knows well, and so I think this is a really smart deal for Danaher. So quickly, does it put anything else on the table to be sold that we weren't necessarily thinking about when it comes to GE? You know, I think this was this is a very big bet, and as far as the assets that GE has to play with, I think this was one of the more significant ones. Um, you know, so GCAS was the other one, their jet leasing business, and Larry Culp has ruled out a sale of that. Yeah. I think this is probably, you know, it's painful maybe for the equity holder, but it makes a lot of sense.